as you know, Medellin Challenge is an international project that uh, have for purpose uh, to empower uh, our uh, youngsters around the world. And uh, the idea is that um, the students can solve a uh, different challenge and at the same time develop a uh, different skills, right? OK, as you know, um, we have three important challenge. OK, each challenge is for each commune from Medellin, Colombia. Uh, the first uh, challenge is related to public service in Commune 40. Um, I know that um, some teams um, selected the challenge, but don't worry. Uh, we have more time to select uh, these uh, teams, right? Uh, the second um, challenge is related to food sovereignty in community team. Uh, and also uh, we have um, we have the next uh, challenge is related to uh, reduce the school dropout in commune four. It's important to know that we have three real world problems related to a, each commune and the idea is each team solve the challenge that um, the teams uh, want uh, select right in general i am going to say to share with you the methodology as you know we have a uh, for methodology design for change uh, it's important uh, to 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 say that for each stage, for each stage for uh, related to design for change, we are going to have a general session. For example, we have a uh, first meeting related to field. What is field? Field is related to try to understand the problematic. And today we are going to have a um, meeting related to imagine with a teacher from Europe. Um, and that's why it's important to to have <laughs> right now a pen. Uh, um, OK, the next uh, online session is related to do uh, in this session. We are going to have uh, or we are going to uh, to learn about how can prototype and share is the last session online uh, when we are going to learn about how to design a video pitch. But remember, it's important, important to get information. In addition to those four online sessions, uh, each team is going to plan uh, their own meeting to solve the challenge. But remember uh, that Maria Isabel said with you uh, during the day, I am going to share with you information related to um, some change uh, in each team, right? It's important uh, to share with you uh, information uh, in general uh, related to online stage and on-site stage. Okay, um, we have uh, some steps, some steps for uh, our online uh, station. For example, we have the first step related to registration. Uh, the second uh, step was uh, launching uh, the, the Medellin Challenge and currently uh, we have in the solving the selected challenge. Uh, that's why uh, today we are going to learn uh, uh, about how to uh, create better ideas, how you can uh, solve the problem related to disruptive ideas, right? And the next step is uh, sending the video pitch. During uh, this week, I am going to share with you uh, important information related to, uh, to how you can design an um, uh, innovative uh, video pitch, how you can create uh, between uh, together a uh, different speech related, uh, related the uh, challenge select, right? And we have a last step is related to iterating. Iterati the solution in Medellin. And that's why Maria Isabel uh, can uh, share with you some uh, general information related to uh, the on-site stage. But remember, I am going to share with you um, right now uh, the dates for each online session. 
Uh, the first online session was in February the 20. Uh, today we are going to have uh, the second online session, but the next um, session will be uh, the March the 2. Uh, and the last online session in general will be March uh, the 8th, right? I don't know if Maria Isabel uh, want to share with uh, the teams um, general information related to the stage on site. Okay, now and about the online, the only like conclusion I can come up with is, um, remember you can have other meetings. Those are the four meetings we are setting for the online stage, but I know and we know you're gonna need to get together more often to discuss, to come up with a solution, to, uh, do everything you have to do as a team. So feel free to organize them with your team leaders, okay? And for the on-site, what I can tell you is that we're doing our best, we're like working hard to provide a safe environment for our students, right? We know it's a big event, but uh, we need to make sure uh, to understand that we're making sure students will always be with adults. They will always be taken care of and the school will be responsible for them. Okay, was it up? Sorry, the microphone went off for a while, so we're just like, conclusion is we are working hard to provide security and safety and make you feel at home, welcome, and enjoy this beautiful city. Okay, and uh, last uh, important thing is share with you information related to virtual campus. Uh, last day, mm -hmm. I sent uh, the password and username to some teams, but don't worry. During the day, I am going to send you uh, to the other school because it's necessary to have um, information related to email for each student, and that's why I need to um, have this information, okay? And I am going to show you the virtual campus. This is the virtual campus and as you know, uh, we have in the stage field. What is field? In this space, you can find all the information related, related to uh, how you can empathize. For example, um, remember, uh, according to the challenge that your team selected, you can uh, find information related, for example, to Commune 13, Commune 4, all the information you can find in this place. This is the, the video, this is the test, this is the biography related to um, uh, each uh, commune. And it's important to say that um, each team uh, should upload an important information related to the problem. Um, currently, uh, we have in field stage. That's why each team uh, should upload in this space um, the problematic selected. For example, if you choose a uh, commune 13, you need to know uh, about this commune. You need to understand the problematic and in this case, you can upload one team member need to upload the information related to empathy map, related to um, all the information about the problem. But don't worry, I am going to send you all the dates for uh, upload this information in virtual campus. Um, okay. This is the virtual campus, and it's important to share with you uh, the online, the on-site space. I am going to share with you in general uh, what we we'll, uh, visit uh, in May, uh, and that's why this is the select teams are in Medellin, Colombia. Uh, it's important to know this data, this data, because uh, we need to know what teams uh, will come to Medellin in May. This is the agenda. I am going to share with you the agenda for all the days. We are going to have uh, four days related to solve the problem in Medellin. 
uh, if you need to know um, about if you need to know about how you can uh, work in this day, please send me an email. I am going to uh, plan in a meeting with you. And it's important uh, to uh, hear what is your question, what, info what information do you need related, for example, uh, with hotel, related to meal, related to uh, transportation. I don't know if Maria Isabel uh, want to uh, share with us information related to uh, on-site uh, stage in May. Uh, good morning, everybody in Middle East. Good morning. And, and, yeah, good, and good afternoon in Spain and Qatar. Um, so I, I believe these are some of the locations, at least, that uh, everybody's joining from today. Um, so if you're from anywhere else, then... I'm not aware yet, so please apologize. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, I would love to know all about where you're coming from. Um, I personally uh, am dialing in today from Copenhagen, which you see on the map here. And I have been attempting uh, to put uh, Qatar and Spain and Colombia on the world map here. If I failed, then I will definitely join the next geography uh, lesson together with anybody who needs it as much as I do. So here's uh, the world map for the Middling Challenge 2023. All right, what I would love you to do, first of all, before we really get started here, is to write your name in the chat here in Teams. Can you do that for me? I would love that uh, interaction. So please write your name, your own name in the chat. Uh, just use your first name, whatever name that you uh, use on a daily basis. So at least that will help me to get to know your name <laughs> and also to check how many of you are actually able uh, actively to write to me in the chat right? Because some of you may be sharing a computer or looking at a big screen without being able to actually interact with me. And that's also okay. So go ahead and, uh, and write your name in the chat. <clears throat> now, let's get into this. So we woke up this morning and the first decision we had to make was we could stay in bed and continue to dream, right? All day, stay in bed, just dream. That's easy, that's really nice. Or we could choose to get up and go to school to make our dreams come true. And that's what you each decided to do this morning. I want to congratulate you for, for that decision because that is the only decision really that's the right one if we want to improve our life and if we want to make our planet, countries, and cities better places to live now and in the next few years and in the future, where your children and my children will also need, for example, water to drink, water that's clean, air to breathe. We need a good health. We need good education and so much more. So the decisions we make every day does affect if our world actually gets better or worse, right? It's really in our hands. And you're the ones making things better by being here, by participating in the Middling Challenge. And I'm honored to meet you all. You're the stars. You're the ones that can one day, someday, tell your friends, your children and others, that the project you did here in the Middling Challenge actually solved some really big challenges and made life so much better for the future, right? So my name is Lars. I'm from an organization called Educate for Life. I will be your facilitator today. And we have 60 minutes together. So I will be doing my very best to stay within this time limit and to take you through 
some exercises that is going to help you in your imagination and your ideation process in this challenge. So um, this will be step by step. I want you to stay with me. I want you to listen carefully. I want you to work individually in, in, in this session. Now, this sounds a little bit weird because we're working in teams and we're working on a big challenge for a big city and for humanity. But everything you do in this session while working individually is something you will bring back to your team right after this session and something you can work with in the coming time in the rest of this Medellin challenge. Okay, so it's absolutely okay. You will work individually but we'll work on the same challenge. Okay, <clears throat> so you have already in, uh, in, your, in your earlier stage, I need to get my mouse to work now. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure why this, is, ah, here we are. It's, it's working now. There we go. <clears throat> so, you have completed the first of the four stages in the, in the FITS methodology that we're using, the feel. That's what you have done already. So you have chosen a challenge uh, that you want to work on solving in this challenge, right? You work in groups and you know the challenge you're working on. Now, when you are creating new solutions and we'll start to imagine today new solutions what they can look like you're not only solving problems for people in middling that's great enough but you're actually also showing the rest of the world how they too can solve these kind of challenges for people in their parts of the world we're all very similar right we have similar dreams, similar needs. We are capable of accomplishing similar things if we decide to take action. And we are here, we are taking action. So we are uh, ready to start working on the three challenges. Let me just summarize from what I've heard. The first challenge is how to generate sustainable alternatives that allow equitable access to public services. And then there's a specific uh, commune district in Medellin where this is going to, uh, to happen, right? Then the second challenge that you have chosen is, and so, some of you have chosen, is how to generate strategies or tools that promote food sovereignty. And this is in a, in a different in commune 13 in middling and then the third but not least uh, the challenge of what strategies or tools can be implemented to reduce school dropouts amongst children and this is this would be focused on commune four in the city of middling but you all know that way better than i do i was just here summarizing what i know about the challenges that you have decided to be working on and i'm very excited about the challenges that you have decided to uh, to share. So just before we dive into the imagination part of this session, <clears throat> uh, there's there's like five things that I would like you to keep in mind when you begin to imagine. Imagine what could we possibly do to solve these challenges. There are five things. Let me quickly touch on them. The first is try to think global and then test local, right? So actually what I mean here is you are not only solving these challenges in Medellin, although that's great enough, but think globally. And the reason I encourage you to think globally when you're testing locally is you might see the same challenge happening elsewhere on this planet, right? It's actually pretty uh, likely that the same challenge is found many other places on the planet. It's also likely 
that somebody is already also working on solving a similar challenge somewhere else. So think global. That in itself helps you to realize I should maybe reach out to others on this planet who might work on the same challenge. We could compare notes. We could discuss, learn from each other, maybe work together. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing I want you to keep in mind is to always try to make big changes with what you do. Uh, design for big impact, okay? Small impact is already happening in, in, in many parts of the world amongst the many challenges we have that we share as humanity. There is really happening some progress, some improvements on, on many of the challenges, but they are small improvements very often. And we don't feel that we have time enough to just keep waiting until somebody someday have solved it. We have decided to take action. I ask you, encourage you to take big action, design for big change, be bold, be ambitious with this. Okay. The third thing <clears throat> is always to do your research. Research doesn't have to be something scientific. Research can be to do some search on the internet <clears throat> for what is already happening in terms of trying to solve this problem. Are there solutions already to the problem we are trying to solve? What are those solutions? Where are they? Who's doing it? Right? So do your research, come up with ideas, do your research. Research also means talk to people. You probably did already. You will surely in the next phase of this challenge, in the do phase, you will certainly talk to people to understand, <clears throat> are, you, are you coming up with the right approach to solve this challenge, okay? So talk to people, do your search, uh, look in literature, reports, articles, all of that. Do your research. The fourth thing, science facts what I call it. It was once science fiction, something we would see in a movie or read in a book, which was about this crazy future where everything was so different. Actually, a lot of what has been written about in science fiction and movies we have seen, a lot of these things are actually happening in reality today. They have become science facts. So, Things are actually possible today that wasn't possible in the past. And if it's not possible today, probably it's going to be possible soon. So if you come up with a crazy idea today or in the coming days or weeks or months or years, don't discard it don't, don't, and certainly don't discard other people's ideas for being crazy. Crazy is tomorrow's reality. Then finally, the fifth thing I want to recommend that you keep in mind is to be purposeful. Do something out of your purpose. Now, this, is, this really means that you're doing things for a reason, a reason which is not only about money or about practical daily life things. There's a bigger meaning behind this. That bigger meaning tends to attract a lot of other people that will love to work with you and support you in your work because they share and work on a similar purpose. The purpose is really important. Purpose is also what gives us energy to get us up every morning to keep working hard to solve these challenges. That purpose is the fuel, the energy in, in all of us. So do something because it's purposeful, okay? These are the five things that I recommended you, I want to recommend you to, to try out and, and to follow. Now, now here's, here, maybe this is where you start to think, this guy from Denmark, he's crazy. What is this slide now about? This, write your own movie. What is this about? All right, so... Um, you will be doing incredible things that you would never have imagined you could do 
in this very challenge, you would find yourself doing incredible things. You could never have imagined this. It's a bit like being in a movie. <clears throat> Actually, I want to invite you now into a fun way of doing the beginning of this imagination work. Here we go. I'm going to give you the first challenge of this session. You will each be writing three new movie titles. Okay, each of you. So this is the first thing you're going to accomplish in this session. The other thing you're going to accomplish in this session is you're going to create, in addition to three new movie titles, you will create 18 new solutions to the challenges that you're working on. 18 new solutions, each of you. Woo! Can we do this? Well, I say you can. I know you can. So I'm here to help you through these steps, okay? Uh, I'm going to uh, take you step by step through these exercises. And you work alone, as I said, with me here, but you are going to regroup with your team probably right after my session here or sometime later today. And you're going to regroup with your team and then you bring with you what you have created in the session and you discuss it. But I'll uh, tell you exactly what to do uh, later in this session. You're also going to learn some specific exercises that we are using in a, starting in just a moment. These exercises are something you can and probably should do again and again and again. So you're learning some specific ways to do ideation, something that you should do again and again and again, also after this session. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let me introduce you to your business of today, our business of today. I will introduce you to the San Jose de Las Vegas Film Productions. This is the company that we all work in, okay? And this uh, film production company is more than just producing films, it's really about caring greatly about creating a better future for us all. That's what your movies are all about. This is about inspiring the world to create a better future. Your job, each of you, you're hired as title writers, right? That's your specialty. You will write the title of a movie. And a title could be Titanic, right? <laughs> I don't know what your favorite movie uh, is. Um, my personal favorite movie is called The Big Blue. In French, it's called Le Grand Bleu. Uh, it's about uh, the wonders of the ocean and some free divers. That's another story. Um, what really, um, what's really fascinating about being a title writer is that you can come up with any title. It may or may not work, but it's you who decide what the title should be, right? Then later you will discuss it, you will talk to people who watch movies to see if they like it. But today you decide. Nobody will say no to your titles today. What you need to do, however, is to write down the titles that comes to mind. Right. So I'll take you through the exercise. What you're going to need in the rest of this session is some paper. And I, I did share beforehand, I hope you got the message, to have some paper ready. And paper is something pretty old school like me. Uh, but it does help in these particular exercises. It's really quick to either draw with a pen right, or write, whatever. Super easy and fast which is why we're doing it on paper today. So make sure to have some paper ready. One or two pieces of paper is enough. Two is probably ideal, but if you just have one piece of paper, it's okay. It can be an, an A4 like I have here. Um, it could also just be a notebook if that's what you have. That's also fine enough, okay? <clears throat> so as you see here on, on, on my screen, um, we are all about everything in life really making the future better and when it comes to the food that we have access to 
to protecting ourselves from fire, to keep our drinking water clean, health care, having good doctors around, waste management, keeping a happy community, having sports activities, good education, not too much transportation and wasted time. I think we're not doing so well always on that, uh, etc. So we are producing all sorts of films, all sorts of movies, and you will be creating some titles uh, for our new movies. Now, the first exercise we're going to do now is that each of you will write the title for a movie which is generally about a great future for meddling. Okay? And there are three themes, and we're going, all of us, to work on all three themes. We're going to do it step by step together. So stay with me. So, uh, yeah, I know it's crazy. You, you thought, I will never be a movie title writer. And here we are. You are now a movie title writer. So, uh, if you think it sounds too good to be true, well, it's true, nevertheless. <laughs> so let's let's dive into this. Uh, we are going to make a movie title, each of us, for each of the three challenges that you are solving in this Medellin challenge. Okay, so let's do the first one. Uh, the first challenge that some of the groups in the challenge are working on I call it topic one because it's the first I heard of. It's called equitable access to public services. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited that you're working on this challenge, right? We all need access, for example, to hospitals, to doctors, to different healthcare services. If not when we are young, then when we get older, we start to have more, uh, to need this more. Um, and I just want to give you the first example of what a movie title could be, okay? It's just an example. It's just to give you an example to, to frame your own thinking. I like the title that says, Until Every Child is Well. Until Every Child is Well. Wow, that means there's somebody in the, in the hospitals and the doctors and the nurses and all the, those professionals that keep being in service for us until every child is well. I like that personally a lot. The, it just happens to be a title that somebody wrote already. It's a place called Boston Children's Hospital. It's kind of their slogan, right? Today's slogans are a movie titles that that's how you can think of it too. So it's just an example of equitable, equitable access to public services until every child is well. This indicates that every child can get access to the public health care system, right? So it's just an example. But equitable, equitable access to public services can be so many other types of public services. But for the sake of the exercise today, let's stay close together and try to imagine, come up with another movie title about the healthcare space, right? That we can all have access in a, in a similar uh, accessible way to, uh, to good professional healthcare, okay? What is your movie title going to be for this movie? I'm asking each of you now. I'd like you now to take a moment, think about it, and write it down on your piece of paper. Right? Call it topic one, title one. Okay? I'll just give you a few seconds to write it down. I'll have a sip of my uh, semi warm coffee. All right, so I hope uh, that already now that it's working okay for you to be working alone, to be concentrated. I hope you understand me so far. I hope you're okay to open up for crazy dreams, imagine a best 
possible scenario for the healthcare public services in this example. Imagine how amazing it can be. Today we will not focus on how hard it is to get there and to make it happen, but let's just dream about what it can be, how amazing it can be, and write a title that tells a bit of the story of how amazing the world is now that we have solved all these challenges about access to public services, okay? Okay, so I hope you're with me. Um, I was I was curious to to see you on the screen here um, because I don't uh, see there though I see uh, no I don't really see you but that's okay um, let's move forward this was the first movie title that you just wrote congratulations I will hire you again immediately all of you. Um, which I am doing now, because we are about to write movie title number two for today, okay? Now, I know that you are very uh, interested in solving the challenges around food sovereignty, and this is very important. Uh, food sovereignty, in my understanding, is where we as people produce and distribute and also consume the food, right? And we also have control of how it happens. So we are not only consumers anymore that are buying the food. We have a stake and a role to play in the whole food chain, so to speak, a distribution chain. So this is a very important um, challenge to solve. What will be your movie title for the movie you're producing, which is about we solved this challenge. Now we have eliminated the challenge around food sovereignty. All of us are now actively involved in the whole supply chain, from sowing the seeds, seeing the plants and the vegetables and the fruits grow and harvesting and enjoying amazing meals together, hopefully in Medellin uh, and, uh, and also give everybody else that chance to do the same okay so now's your turn write down on the piece of paper your title number two number two what is your title for this movie and and don't, no cheating here we need all your ideas <laughs> my example here is everyone is a farmer every garden's a farm it was just something that came up for me um it's like that ideal state uh, of the city of the country of the world where we would probably have this uh, food sovereignty uh, where everybody is involved in the whole process everybody is a farmer every garden's a farm to me that sounds nice um so i look forward later to learn uh, what you think is a good title okay so I want to take you to the next um, the next title. And I did say that we will create three movie titles, one for each of the challenges. Uh, but I think you're doing so well, so I'll give you an extra one. We could really use your talent as movie title writers. But this next one is a horror movie. Are you up for that? These other ones are pretty nice to think about, but this one is going to be a bit creepy. So here we go. So topic number three, your challenge number three was school dropouts. So this movie, this horror movie is about the day every children left school, never to return. And it's the story of how Middle Lane cha changed if all the schools closed. So imagine a scenario, all schools closed for some reason. You woke up one morning, there were no schools or they were not open anyway. And the children didn't go there, they couldn't. What would happen? 
what would happen to Medellin? What would happen to all of Colombia? What if this happened everywhere? Also here in Copenhagen, where I'm sitting today, what would happen? And what would your movie title be? So please write the title of this horror movie. I call it a horror movie. I think it's scary to think about. I think if it stays this way for many years, this will have consequences, all right? We will never learn to read or write or do basic math. Is that important? I don't know. What would happen? We wouldn't maybe learn other languages, would we? Maybe we would. I don't know. What would happen if all schools closed and we would never go to school again? Our kids would never go to school. I don't know what would happen. It's up to you. Please write down a title. This is the worst scenario, right? At least uh, to educators. So, all right. I hope I hope you got it. I hope you got a title, but I want to get rid of the horror. Let's get these scary thoughts out of the question. Let's get back to the positive future, the good futures that we're here to build. Okay. So I want to give you a positive, nice version of the theme of school dropouts. My movie will be called the meddling magical schools of happiness. So, this is where kids, students are happy. They love going to school. Schools are great. What's not to love about it? So for Middling, what could this amazing story be titled? What would your movie title be for this movie? Where Middling actually is so amazing. It is actually full. In the future, it's full of magical schools of happiness, right? We don't know yet how we get there. That's coming in just a moment in the next exercise. But let's imagine these schools are full of happy, happy students. What's the title of this movie? Short title that inspires you and that could inspire others. Write it down. Also, this is also topic three. So put it right next to the horror title that you made just before, okay? All right, we are, we are halfway through uh, our work together in this session. I hope you're, you're keeping up. Um, I would love just to get uh, uh, some kind of sign. Is, is everybody okay? Are you, are, are you along? Are you following me? Yes, it's very interesting. I follow you. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Cool. But I'm I'm sensing even when I don't hear it, but I'm sensing that you are those change agents. You are the people, all of you out there, that can make this happen. That can make these dreams a reality. We'll figure out how later, but you are the ones and you will be doing this. So thank you for these movie titles, okay? Now, let's move uh, to uh, another, the next exercise. But we are staying close to this theme of the magical schools of happiness. So we are staying in this challenge, okay? But not, now it's a little bit more than just coming up with the title. So, I'm now offering you a magic wand. Each of you will get a magic wand. I wish I had one. I don't have a magic wand. <laughs> Imagine Harry Potter, you know, you all know Harry Potter and his magic wand and it does magical things, right? I always wanted that. I can buy it in the toy shop. It's pretty expensive and I don't think it works actually. But let's imagine I'm giving each of you a magic wand now and that one, works okay but only six times <laughs> so you can you can change anything you like but only six things okay turns out we can probably fix this limitation so you can do more but for now because of the limited time we have together 
you can change six things about the schools in Medellin, in Colombia, actually schools everywhere. Remember what I said earlier, the challenges that we want to solve for Medellin are probably very similar to the challenges that we have in other cities and other countries, right? So, but we're starting Colombia and that's the, that's the case um, that we're working on together. So we want to turn every young person into a happy student. How are you going to do that? Again, we are working individually and now you're going to need a piece of paper. If you only have one piece of paper, it's okay. <clears throat> you can turn it around so you have the blank uh, back of, of the page uh, ready to work with. Now, I'm going to show you uh, a little practical piece of information because we're going to fold this paper now. And I'm going to say something which is slightly different from what you see on the visual here. <clears throat> but what I want is to end up with, in this case, actually eight different um, squares, right? So you, we are folding the paper, so we end up with uh, uh, eight sections on the paper, ready for eight different ideas. We're only going to use six of them, however, but it's very easy to fold this into uh, eight sections, right? Um, and, and some are really good to do magical things out of, of, of paper folding, and it's amazing to see. I'm not that good, but I can fold the paper in half, and I'd like you to do the same. Fold it in half, then fold it in half the other way, and then fold it in half one more time. Right? And when you unfold it, well, now you have um, like eight different small areas, and we can now start to sketch one idea, one solution in each of them, right? So that keeps them separate from each other, which is what this exercise is about to do. So here's your paper. <clears throat> and in the first block, uh, let's call it number one, as you see on the screen. This is where you put the first idea in just a moment. We place the first idea. We have 60 seconds to make one idea and to describe it. When you describe an idea, you can draw, you can sketch, you can use colors or just a black pencil, whatever you like. You can also just write some words that come to mind. Anything is fine, as long as you can interpret it later and share with your teams what this idea is about. That's all that matters. So idea number one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So we're just going to use six of these uh, areas here. Okay, so we're going to sketch six different ideas in six minutes. And that means that I'm going to pull up, I have a, a timer here, uh, which I will be using and I'll just say, hey, time's up, right? Um, so let's move to, to the first. Um, the first exercise uh, of this kind. So we are now going to work on the challenge of eliminating school dropout. Okay. Now this could go several ways, right? It could turn into that city full of magical schools of happiness. Could be that we're changing the future in that direction, or which I don't hope. It could turn into this nightmare scenario. We woke up and there were no schools uh, and and there are no young people going to school. Uh, but we want we want the the good scenario. We want the optimistic future. Okay. The w best way that I know to come up with ideas without being stuck in in the in the challenge and in the trouble of it one way to come up with a good way forward to create new solutions is to ask a question the question is how might we all 
Your ideas from here on in this session must start with how might we, okay? I will give you an example. So how might we get our teachers to ask each of us what we want to learn today? Right? That's a question. It's a question that starts with how might we? And, and then the idea is that the teachers actually ask me every morning I come to school. Hey Lars, I'm so happy to see you. I hope you're happy to see me too. What would you like to learn today? So I can better help you. Now this is, maybe this is actually what's happening from time to time, right? But it's, I'm pretty sure it's not always how things work. And there are so many good reasons for that, right? This is not practically possible uh, in most cases, I assume, right? But, but let's say I would like that to be one of the solutions to create these magical schools of happiness that every student is super happy. To get to that happiness, we need to have some solutions. We need to change how we do things today. What is it we want to change? That's what we are creating solutions for right now in this exercise. So my first example, and I, we are going to create six of them each. My first is just an example was that the, if the teachers ask us what we want to learn, wow, now I could spend the day at school learning stuff that I would be excited about learning. I would be pretty happy about that as a start, right? <laughs> I'm not saying this is solving everything. I'm just saying this is one of my six ideas, okay? And it starts with how might we? Always start your idea by asking a question. How might we do this, okay? I look forward to hear how this goes, okay? Let's try, let's do our best. At least we are learning the technique and then you can get better at it after this session and keep trying this way. <clears throat> I guarantee you this uh, can really uh, help you in creating solutions that people start believing in and that uh, actually solve the problems that you are trying to solve. Okay, let's have a go with this. So. Get ready, put your pen or crayons or pencils or what you are using in the first uh, block on first of the, uh, the blocks of the paper and get ready. And I'm now giving you 30, no, I promised you 60 seconds, <laughs> didn't I? So 60 seconds to draw or write one idea that can turn all schools into these happy places where all the students are happy. What would you fix? What would you change in the schools today to make schools such a happy place that makes everybody even happier, okay? <clears throat> draw or write your idea. If you draw it, it, just draw it, right? In the beginning, let's get started. Draw your idea. If you can, try to frame this question with how might we actually do this, right? Okay, turn it into a question. 60 seconds, here we go. And you have 30 seconds left. Five seconds left. All right, time's up for this one. Whatever you have now, just leave it uh, and come back to it later. Now we're moving to create one more idea, right? Not this one anymore, 
now it's time to empty your head to come up with another idea. It's got to be different from the first one. On your piece of paper, you move to the second block and get ready. And I'll give you 60 new seconds to think and to come up with another idea to something we can change in the schools today that makes everybody happy students in happy schools. Okay, so a second idea out of the six, you have 60 seconds starting now. And 15 seconds left. Okay, time's up. That was 60 seconds. Time flies, right? I hope now you have two ideas, two different ideas. We could call these ideas solutions, as I said. Different, two different ways to solve something that today is maybe not making us happy. It may be something that stops us from the happy students. It's even something that causes some other students to drop out of school, which is one of the big challenges that you decided to solve. Okay, We are already here getting started on coming up with important things we want to change, okay? So let's get ready. We need six different ideas and I'll tell you why when we're done. But now first I'll give you 60 new seconds in field number three on your paper. Move on to field number three and get ready. Come up with one, the third thing, another th very different thing from the other two, something else that could make us happy, something that could solve the school dropouts. Okay, I think you, you get the, the point of the exercise. Let's get it to it. The 60 new seconds begin now. All right, that was that was quick. So uh, and uh, that makes us already be ready to do idea number four. So find a new space on your paper, an empty space. Move your pen or pencil over there and get ready to draw or to write. It's got to be a new idea, a new thing that we can change to make these schools a magic place, okay? You might start to feel a bit out of ideas at this point. That's perfectly normal, but I guarantee you, you can all come up with six ideas. 
So let's try, okay? I'll give you another 60 seconds, come up with a fourth idea different from the others. Let's go, 60 seconds starting now. Fifteen seconds left. <clears throat> All right, time's up again. Now let's get the idea number five going. Okay, are you ready for the challenge? It's okay to, if it's starting to feel a bit challenging to come up with more ideas but you can do this i promise you you are the creative ones you are the ones living uh your life as students and with great first-hand experience from uh, from your days at school okay let's do this idea number five and you have 60 seconds here we go Your microphone, Lars. Absolutely. So uh, time is up. That was 60 seconds. So you, you're you doing great. And I was just enjoying the comments in the chat here. And uh, you're doing fine. Um, yes, the this exercise is strange and, and different. And as a matter of fact, if we are trying to come up with new ideas, new solutions to big challenges, we need to think differently, right? And we probably also need new ways of getting there, of finding those ideas. So new ways of working can be really important. And here's one exercise. We are just going to complete this particular exercise with the last of the six ideas. So have patience and be ready to kind of empty your your ideas your list of ideas of how can we change schools how can we fix the things that should be better should be different so this becomes a dream school okay idea number six goes into whatever empty uh cell empty place you have on the paper now okay 60 seconds starting now here we go
And this is the last 30 seconds. You can do it. All right, time's up. So congratulations, everybody. Um, I would like to know in the chat um, if you now have six different ideas. Please write in the chat if you're still with me. Uh, also write in the chat if you don't have six. How many ideas, different ideas, do you now have on your paper? Please write that in the chat. I would like to uh, to know. Don't write what the idea is. Seven, right? Wow. And Ben has six ideas. Gloria, six. Five-ish is great. Um, eight, five, six, six. Some of you went ahead uh, ahead of us. That's brilliant. Well done. Six, six, six. Five ideas. Great, Maria. Uh, Ileana, five. Amazing. Well done. Catalina, five. Now, I'm sure I'm sure you're all um, great at math. So, <laughs> yeah, six is in, in process. Exactly, that's fine. Keep it keep it going. Now, I'd like you all in uh, your next math lesson or, or whenever try to add together how many ideas you have together, right? In total, from this exercise, it's a lot. Five and five. Okay. Somebody's bad at math, that's okay. Find somebody in your class who will add the numbers together or ask an AI or something to do it for you, okay? So together, we created a lot of new solutions today, a lot. Now, they may not be particularly good, but they are the first. This is the first round of ideas that may be useful for solving the challenge of school dropouts, okay? But the one thing that maybe you noticed in the exercise is that you were actually able to continue to generate ideas and they were different ideas. And you can actually continue even beyond the six here. Maybe you need a break, which you will get in a, in a few minutes, uh, at least a break from me. Uh, and then, come back to this exercise and do it together as a group if you feel like, hey, we need more ideas. If you need more ideas, come back to this exercise and do it again. I'll share the link to this exercise so you have all the material that you can come back to it and look at it again and again and again, okay? So that's kind of my gift to you. It's a fun uh, exercise, but it's also really effective at generating a lot of uh, new ideas in very short time. And the ideas are all focused on solving the same challenge. Okay. Now, before we wrap up in, in just a moment, I want to, I want to tell you that you should, I would encourage you in your groups to do the same exercise, but on your own challenge, right? Maybe you did this for school dropouts, but you're actually working on to promote food sovereignty or vice versa. <clears throat> That's fine. Go ahead and do this exercise on your own challenge in your team and see how many new ideas you can generate in short time. And when you think big, you think about the vision, the purpose, the big picture of how great things can be. You are going to generate a lot of ideas that might work. And you can try them out in the next stage of this challenge where you are actually doing, where you're out there testing your ideas. But for now, we want to generate many ideas. To get a good idea, you need to get many ideas. That's really how that works. Same for the third challenge, the equitable access to public services. That team should be doing this exercise as well <clears throat> on that challenge. Here are, here are the five things again that I recommend you to keep in mind. Think global. You're not alone about having this challenge, right? We have it too. 
let's talk together, let's work together, let's inspire each other on how we could solve these challenges. If you give me one idea and I give you one idea, wow, suddenly together we have at least two ideas and they're probably going to get better when we generate a third and a fourth idea together. Then the big change, the think big, think big impact, always be researching what you're trying to do. Research, 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 because there's probably somebody else working on something similar, maybe they have a solution already that you should know about. Science, facts, uh, things are possible today that you cannot even imagine, right? And tomorrow even more so, and be purposeful. Now it's time to gather your team, go back in your groups. What I would like you to do is share to each other the movie titles you created, the solutions that you came up with, just present to each other. What did you get out of this exercise? And don't judge anything, right? All ideas are good ideas. It's only in the next stage, the do stage, where we get to realize whether something can work or not. But here at the imagine stage, all ideas are fine. Just we need more and more ideas. So you can work together in this exercise to do that. Don't turn down ideas, encourage each other and enjoy the rest of this MediLink challenge. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to meet you all. I was so glad to see all your names. Thank you for playing along and for the comments. And uh, uh, I did promise you the, uh, the link. Uh, so I'll share here a link so you can come back to this content uh, Any time that you want to see it again. When you work with your team or later on, um, here it is. Go back and tr try the exercises. And I wish you all the best to solve these challenges and to tell us, the rest of us, all about your solutions. Enjoy and thank you very much for the Lars, session today. Lars, again, thank you very much as usual. It was like absolutely wonderful. Uh, we're very happy to have had this session with you and everybody is. We're like getting a lot of messages thanking you. So we just want to say uh, thanks again and we hope to see you here in this uh, beautiful project we're going to have. It was an amazing workshop. Thank you so much.